This is an English guide to learn Swedish. Hello and welcome back. In this episode we will look at the declinations of nouns. English is great because it only has one really. We add S. Swedish on the other hand has six declinations. In the previous episode we looked at the two genders, T gender and N gender. In this episode we will use this knowledge to sort plural nouns under one of the six Swedish declinations. These six suffixes are or, ar, r, n, er, and also no suffix at all. And obviously, there's a lot of exceptions and special cases too. Yes, this is complicated, but hopefully it will make more sense later on. So while I go through this, I will refer to words with the T gender as T words, and words with the N gender as N words. Although there are some rules for where a noun belongs, there are plenty of exceptions and the only way to really get a hang of this is practicing and exposing yourself to Swedish. I will start with the declinations for N words and then the T words and finally the declination which contain both N and T words. First declination. Ur. N words that end with A in singular are inflected to ur in plural. En blomma, flera blommor. En groda, flera grodor. Two exceptions here is en ros, flera rosor. En våg, flera vågor. Second declination. Ar. N words that end with E in singular are inflected to ar in plural. En pojke, flera pojkar. Some other examples that doesn't follow the rule are en bok, flera bokar, en våg, flera vågar. There's also an alternative of this declination where you for some words delete the last vowel in the singular form before you add the plural suffix. En Tiger, flera tigrar, en sommar, flera somrar. And there's also one gender exception to this alternative declination. The word finger is inflected the same, although it's a T word. Ett finger, flera fingrar. Third declination, r. N words that end with a vowel in singular and aren't covered by the first and second declination are inflected to r in plural. N ko, flera kor. En bestämmelse, flera bestämmelser. En sko, flera skor. Fourth declination. N. T words that end on a vowel in singular are inflected to n in plural. Ett äpple, flera äpplen. 
ett bi flera bin. There are two nouns that have irregular plural forms. Ett öga flera ögon. Ett öra flera öron. Fifth declination. Er. Both T words and N words belong here. A lot of foreign words with emphasis on the last vowel belongs here. En telefon. Flera telefoner. Ett café. Flera caféer. En idé. Flera idéer. En park. Flera parker. There are also some words in this declination who modify their stem vowels in the plural. En hand. Flera händer. Ett land. Flera länder. En bok, flera böcker. Six declination. No inflection. T words that end on a consonant generally belong here. Both T and N words that end on are, and, or ende, and some occupations can be here. Ett bord, flera bord. Ett hus, flera hus. En målare, flera målare. Ett armband, flera armband. En troende, flera troende. En mekaniker, flera mekaniker. So, we have now looked at the six declinations and some exceptions within them. But it wouldn't feel completely right if there wasn't an exception to the declinations themselves, right? Luckily, there is. A few n-words get a s and also has its vowel changed to an e or an ö, unless it doesn't already has one. Here are three examples. En lus Flera löss. En mus. Flera möss. En gås. Flera gäss. En höna. Flera höns. As you probably noticed. The rules are broken at least as often as they are upheld. And this is a mess. But foreign people do learn Swedish all the time, so don't feel too disheartened. The declinations are such messes that you can have native Swedes argue about how to inflect certain nouns to plural. Like for example the word gröt. It's all about exposure. Next time we will look at definite and indefinite nouns and combine this with both the plural and singular forms. Thank you for watching.